In the four years I was with Amelia Lou, we were very compatible, so compatible that it gave her an illusion. Maybe spending a lifetime together with Joey wouldn't be so bad. So she publicly displayed our affection. The news that I was going to marry her spread everywhere, but right at this critical moment, my brother, who had married and moved abroad, suddenly got divorced and returned home. Amelia personally picked him up from the airport, took him to various events, and helped him expand his network. Everyone was waiting to see me become a laughingstock, but I felt relieved. Phew, scared me to death. Who wants to marry her? Chapter 1 The day Luis Fu returned home, Amelia was in my bed. I grabbed her waist and pressed her hands, pinning her to the bed. Her face was flushed, already aroused, but when that special ringtone rang, she snapped out of it like a fish and slipped away. I caught her hand. Where are you going? She brushed my hand aside and said. Luis called me. It must be urgent. She took the call in a hurry, not even bothering to put on her shoes. I don't know what was said on the other end. Her originally furrowed brow relaxed. She said softly, you can't do this again next time. Wait for me. I'll be right there. While Amelia took a shower. I lay in bed, lost in thought. I didn't care what Luis said to Amelia. I was just thinking about that ringtone. The special ringtone Luis said on Amelia's phone before he went abroad. He told Amelia, you can't change this ringtone. When you hear it, you'll think of me. But no matter how Amelia pleaded for him to stay, Luis left alone, resolutely going abroad. That day, Amelia drank a lot, angrily threw her phone to the ground, shattering the screen. But she regretted it and cried all night, full of resentment and helplessness. Later, she got a new phone and, for some reason, wanted to find that special ringtone again. At first, she just wanted to hear it one more time, to say a final goodbye to the past. But she couldn't remember what it was. Night after night, she lay in bed listening to song after song, hoping to hear that familiar melody. It became an obsession she couldn't let go of. And just now, that special ringtone suddenly rang, waking her up, and waking me up too. So she had unconsciously found that ringtone again, hadn't she? Amelia came out quickly. She dressed while saying to me, I'm going out, don't wait for me. But I called her back, Amelia, let's end this here. Chapter 2 My relationship with Amelia had always been muddled. At first, when someone asked her, are you dating Joey? She shook her head, just friends with benefits. I didn't comment on this, after all, she wasn't wrong. But two years later, when she introduced me to others, she said, this is my boyfriend. I was stunned for a moment, but I didn't say much. Half a year ago, she suddenly asked if I was willing to marry her. I nodded and proposed to her in a meticulously arranged setting. That day she smiled brilliantly, and I was also caught up in that beautiful illusion, until I inadvertently overheard her conversation with her best friend. Her friend was shocked. Are you serious? She smiled ambiguously, a smile that was both helpless and seemed like a compromise with fate. She said, maybe spending a lifetime together with Joey wouldn't be so bad. I felt uneasy, more and more restless each day. I didn't know what was wrong with me, until Luis made that call. I suddenly felt relieved. Turns out I didn't want to marry Amelia. Chapter 3 What did you say? Amelia's face, originally flustered, suddenly froze for a moment, but the next second it was filled with resentment. Her gaze was heavy as she looked at me, but I didn't care at all, so I smiled at her. I said, we are done, it ends here. I always thought she would never show that expression again, the look of resentment and helplessness intertwined in her eyes, just like the night Luis left, but this time, she didn't cry. She looked at me with a gaze that seemed to want to tear me to pieces. A moment later, she turned her head and chose to leave, only leaving me with a cold, distant back and a whisper so faint it was almost inaudible. Then so be it. Chapter 4 I heard about Luis returning from abroad from a friend, along with the news of his divorce. It seems that the young model cheated on him, saying it was for the sake of art, so she slept with the photographer. In the end, not only did she cheat on him, but she also took his money and ran. Ah, artists. We really don't understand them. I found it amusing. I couldn't help but remember. When he insisted on marrying that young model and resolutely went abroad with her. He said she was his muse. The purest light in the world. He said we ordinary people with our prejudiced views didn't understand love. Let alone undying devotion until the end of time. But he couldn't see that what maintained their love was the large amount of living expenses sent from home every month. And that money was actually earned by me. But none of that mattered. It's been three days since I told Amelia we were done. I sent her a message, asking when she would come to pack up her things. She ignored me. I contacted her assistant, asking him to handle it. The assistant hemmed and hawed, constantly making excuses. So I changed the locks and decided not to bother anymore. 
I bought this house for Amelia because she said she liked the tranquility of the river flowing under the bridge every morning. So I stayed with her in this inconveniently located edge of the city. Now that I've moved back to a spacious apartment near the office, I realize how foolish I was before. Isn't it nice to sleep half an hour longer? Back at the office, I suddenly remembered there was a banquet tonight. Originally, I was supposed to attend with Amelia, but now I needed to find someone else last minute. So I asked my assistant to arrange someone to accompany me to the banquet tonight. The assistant looked puzzled. Aren't you going with manager Lou? She should be going with someone else. The assistant's expression changed several times, not knowing what to imagine. And she looked indignant. Don't worry, Mr. Wong. I'll arrange the best for you. The next moment, she said awkwardly, Mr. Wong, it's a special holiday. No one's taking orders. How about we make do? I was speechless and asked, what do you mean by make do? She tentatively said, currently, only a courier girl is willing to take the order. Her profile says she loves boxing and is a fierce lady. What do you think, Mr. Wong? I asked helplessly, do I have a choice? She shook her head, looking innocent. I was speechless. What else could I do but ask? But when I saw her in person, I was stunned. How to describe it? This figure, curvaceous. This face, bright eyes and white teeth, smooth and tender skin. A pair of long legs with firm yet elegant lines, making one's heart race. This wasn't just making do. This was a hidden gem among courier girls. A bona fide goddess. If only she weren't so talkative. We're a proper company. We don't take escort jobs. Of course, it's not entirely off the table. But that's a different price. And manager Amelia Liu, she won't complain about me, right? I have a 99, 9% 9 positive rating. If I get a complaint, my bonus is gone. Of course, all this can be resolved if you insist. Shut up, I couldn't take it anymore. Gritting my teeth and spitting out the words, she looked innocent. Calmly finishing her sentence, it'll cost extra. I took a deep breath, be quiet, or I'll file a complaint. Of course, if you perform well, I'll give you a five-figure bonus afterward. She gave a satisfied okay sign. Don't worry, I'm a professional. Chapter 5 The professional lady had sharp eyes. As soon as he walked in the door, he exclaimed, What the hell? My brow twitched, and I angrily rebuked. No swearing. She pointed not far away and said to me, Your fiancé is over there. Of course, just my fiancé alone wouldn't have elicited such a reaction from her. The main thing was the man standing next to my fiancé, and my fiancé was holding his arm, smiling charmingly. She looked like she was enjoying the drama, saying, You've been cheated on. I was speechless and helplessly responded. That's my brother. She became even more excited, her smile almost breaking into laughter. Wow, double kill. I wasn't sure if it was because of the professional lady Leona's playful banter, or if I was just calm, watching Amelia and Luis. I didn't feel much, of course, I didn't plan to go up and greet them, but Luis came over on his own. Brother, long time no see. I've been back for days and I finally get to see you, why haven't you been answering my calls? Unbelievable. His tone was so passive-aggressive, clearly implying that I was not on good terms with him and wasn't a loving brother. He continued. Mom and Dad miss you too. When are you coming home for dinner? They'd be so happy. Amazing. He was implying that I wasn't on good terms with my parents either and never visited, making me look like an unfilial son. Seeing me remain silent, he added. I even brought you a gift. Please don't be mad at your brother anymore. Damn. This bastard hasn't changed at all, indirectly calling me petty and narrow-minded. Ever since we were kids, this bastard was like this. When he made a mistake, he would tell everyone it was his fault. And somehow, everyone ended up thinking it was my fault. As I grew older, I realized Luis was truly a manipulative person. So I said, answer your call. When did you call me, brother? Your memory must be failing. Could it be you don't remember your brother's number but remember your ex-sister-in-law's number? I bit out the word sister-in-law through gritted teeth making me feel nauseated. The surrounding people started to notice the situation, whispering among themselves. At this moment, Leona began to speak, furiously adding fuel to the fire. Mad at you. What did you do to wrong Joey? Don't be ambiguous. Tell us what happened. Also, what do you mean you brought a gift? So don't be mad at you. Are you apologizing or being passive-aggressive? If you're being passive-aggressive, let's lay everything out and see whose fault it really is. If you're apologizing, just say sorry honestly. Then Joey can consider whether to forgive you. After all, if you've committed heinous crimes, we might have to resort to drastic measures and uphold justice. Leona's words came out so quickly that Luis couldn't get a word in, until Amelia coldly asked, Who are you? Her sharp gaze swept over Leona and me, finally landing on Leona's hand holding my arm. I met her gaze directly, holding Leona's hand, and took half a step forward. So, miss, who are you? I was ready to face off with her 
but Leona suddenly swung me from the left to the right. Whoa. I was completely taken aback. This girl actually threw me from one side to the other like throwing out trash. For a moment, I felt like I had teleported. How is this girl so strong? I suddenly remembered what the assistant said. Loves boxing. Fierce lady. Could it be that this wasn't a metaphor but literal? Alright. This girl has some skills. Amelia glared at Leona fiercely. Take your hand off. Leona raised her chin. Like a proud peacock. She deliberately interlocked fingers with me and said arrogantly. In a lawful society, harassing someone else's companion is not allowed. Amelia, emotionally agitated, started to say. I am his fiancé. Just as she was about to finish her sentence, Luis interrupted her. Amelia. Luis looked panicked, tightly grabbing Amelia's arm, his face ugly. Amelia glanced at me. Just one look and she turned her attention back to Luis. She suppressed all her resentment. Let Luis grasp her hand tightly, and turn to leave. Chapter 6 That night, aside from the conflict with Amelia and Luis, Leona was very professional. She said her face was about to go numb from smiling, and she had to smile gently and gracefully which was damn difficult. She also asked if I was tired too. It's ridiculous. Drinking, smiling, chatting, and to maintain your dignity, I could only eat a little bit. I feel like my soul has been drained. Hearing this made me want to slap her. Damn, she ate four whole Peruvian roast chickens. Where's my dignity? Couldn't she see everyone looking at us in shock? But I had to admit, it was indeed exhausting. I gave Leona a big red envelope, and said I'd request her again next time. She left with a dark face constantly emphasizing, I'm a decent person. I nodded absentmindedly, sure, sure, I'll recommend you for more work next time. After sending Leona off, I slowly went home. As soon as I got upstairs, I saw Amelia. She stood there expressionless, looking at me calmly. I didn't want to deal with her and tried to walk past, but she bumped into my chest, holding onto me tightly, refusing to let go. I reached out to pry her arms off me. She ignored this, standing on tiptoe to kiss me. I got a sudden shock and pushed her away hard, shouting. Get away. Amelia stumbled but got up as if she hadn't heard. Continuing to cling to me, I grabbed her by the collar, holding her away from me by her collarbone, keeping her at a distance. Amelia looked incredulous. She took a step back, her gaze poisonous. You pushed me. Who do you think you are? Wasn't it you who was so horny you had to crawl into my bed like a dog in heat? Even though I had said it was over, even though I thought I had let go, my heart still clenched sharply. It felt like it stopped beating for a few seconds. My mouth filled with the taste of iron. So this was how she had always seen me. I nodded and said. Yes, you're right. I was horny. I initiated it. But so what? Did I force you? We played a consensual game. Now I'm saying it's over. So it's over. If you touch me again, that's unacceptable. Chapter 7 Amelia and I could be considered childhood friends. We were born in the same year. With me being three months older. Our families had business dealings. And our parents were friends. Even our homes were connected. Amelia was the first person I had a crush on, but she didn't like me. She liked Luis, who was sunny, cheerful, and like a little son. As for Joey, I was dull, boring, and lifeless. Some people even doubted that Luis and I were real brothers. Our surnames are different. Could Joey be adopted by the Fu family? Maybe he's an illegitimate child. For a while, such rumors were rampant. After hearing this, Amelia, unusually, forced Luis to apologize to me. Luis with a mischievous grin, said, brother, don't be mad. Some friends were just joking around. Who knew ill-intentioned people would spread it? I thought she did it for me, but later I realized it was for Luis. To prevent others from thinking Luis's father was fooling around outside, Amelia always loved Luis deeply. So, when Luis met his true love, had a flash marriage, and moved abroad, Amelia became a desperate trapped beast. And it was at this moment that I took advantage of the situation and made that suggestion to her. Amelia said, I don't like you. I said, we don't have to talk about feelings, do we? I never needed Amelia to like me. Being with her wasn't about developing deep feelings over time. It was just a matter of weighing the pros and cons. Fulfilling each other's needs. Chapter 8. Luis has been back for half a month now. During this time, Amelia has been by his side. Attending various events and helping him expand his network. And it seems my mom finally remembered my existence. She called me and started with a barrage of scolding. Luis has been back for so long and you haven't helped him or even called him. Joey, do you still consider yourself a member of the Fu family? It was amusing. As if treating myself as a member of the Fu family would make them see me as one. Is there anything you need? If not, I'm hanging up. My mom knew my temper well. Though she was full of anger, she got to the point. Come home for dinner tonight. I have something to discuss. Also, bring back the cufflinks you bought last time. Luis will love them. I chuckled and hung up the phone. 
What a bold request. 30 million canary diamond cufflinks. Who wouldn't like them? Ordinarily, I shouldn't attend such a trap-filled dinner, but I knew that if I didn't go tonight, my mom would make a scene at my office tomorrow. Just like when Luis rebelliously wanted to marry that young model, my mom stormed into the office and slapped me, demanding why I didn't manage Luis properly and let him meet such a person. But I returned the slap to Luis's face and sternly asked, when did you start associating with such disreputable people? When I got home, they had already started dinner, a harmonious family of three, with Amelia also present. Seeing me, she paused, staring at me for a moment, then looked away expressionlessly. Luis was the first to get up, pulling me to the table. Brother, don't be mad at mom and dad. You know, I have low blood sugar. When you didn't come back, they were worried I'd get hungry, so they didn't wait for you. My mom looked stern. Don't mind him. If he can't be on time, whose fault is that? I smiled and said. Then should I leave? My mom glared at me, gritting her teeth. Come with me. I lazily followed her into the kitchen and asked. What's the matter? She hesitated for a moment and then spoke. Luis is going to get engaged to Amelia. I was stunned and didn't say anything. The next second, she couldn't wait to continue. Amelia has always liked Luis. It was you who shamelessly fought with Luis for her. Now that Luis is back, shouldn't you return Amelia to him? Besides, Amelia doesn't even like you. Let it go. And don't tell Luis about the mess between you and Amelia. Not only others, but I myself had often doubted whether I was their biological child. So, when I was a kid, I took their hair and did a paternity test with my own. The result disappointed me. Oh well, what a pity. My distraction made her unhappy. She questioned me. Did you hear what I said? I opened my mouth, about to speak. When Luis opened the kitchen door, he looked curious. Mom, what are you secretly telling brother? Don't hide it from me. I want to know too. My mom's expression changed dramatically, becoming gentle. She smiled softly. Your brother said he brought you a gift. Saying this, she pushed me. Luis looked expectantly at me. Brother, really? Gift? I smirked. Do you dare to take a gift from your brother? Luis's face stiffened, remembering unpleasant past events. My mom wanted to say something, but I had already decisively walked to the living room. After all, I still had a big job to finish. What a feast. This table full of food. All Luis's favorites. I looked at Amelia with a dark expression. She stood up in fright, taking a few steps back, looking at me nervously. What's wrong? What happened? I glanced at her and smiled. I'm fine. Really fine. Never been better. I grabbed the edge of the table and lifted it a bit. It was heavy. No wonder. It was a marble table. But since I came to this trap-filled dinner, I was prepared. So I made a call. Leona, bring the hammer up here. Less than 10 seconds after hanging up, Leona burst in. She asked, what do you want to do? I tilted my chin up. Hand it to me. Joey. Don't you dare. I wasn't sure whose voices they were. Probably Amelia and my mom. I couldn't tell clearly. Just as I was about to swing the hammer, my dad and Luis grabbed my hand tightly. At that moment, Leona, with a look of sudden realization, said. You should have said so earlier. The next second, she raised her fist high. Then it fell like a gust of wind. With just one punch, the marble table cracked from the point of impact. The crack spread like spider webs across the entire table. The next second, a continuous crisp sound filled the room. Dishes and plates fell with a crash, clattering. Soup and food splashed everywhere. The whole table was easily smashed by her. The sound was too pleasant. My mom was stunned. My brother was stunned. Amelia was stunned too. Only I looked at the mess, smiling in satisfaction. No wonder she's my fierce lady, the female boxer. I definitely have to give her a bonus. Chapter 9 I met Leona at the security booth. She was wearing a uniform from a certain delivery company, pestering the security guard to let her in to deliver food. Aren't you a courier? She chuckled. Same thing. Same thing. Short on money. Yep. So I let her into the car. Originally, I intended to fulfill our previous verbal agreement, giving her a job as my secretary, and this time having her wait in the car holding the hammer. But I didn't expect her to have such skills. My mom tried to rush over and hit me, but Leona blocked her. Auntie, do you want to try my slap? My mom covered her face, retreating two or three steps. Joey, are you crazy? Luis supported my mom, angrily scolding. Brother, apologize to mom right now. I looked away and said to Leona. Let's go. With Leona by my side, no one dared to step forward, but as we were about to leave the front yard, Amelia caught up, her gaze pierced through Leona, staring at me, Joey, who is she? I pulled Leona closer and said to her, what do you think? Her face turned ugly, I turned to leave, she spoke again, Luis said he wants to be with me. I paused, oh, congratulations, you got what you wanted. Is there nothing else you want to say? 
I looked at her. When you get married, I'll bring a gift. Amelia laughed. A laugh uglier than crying. Good. Very good. Watching Amelia's departing figure, Leona rubbed her palm and said. Why do I feel like she's such a pretentious coquette? I was silent for a while, then asked nervously. How are you so strong? She clenched her fist and twirled it next to her flushed cheek. If I hadn't just seen her smash the table with one punch, I would have thought she was being cute. With a proud face, she said. Don't underestimate women. I've been at Mount Ame, and I've dabbled in Muay Thai, Judo, and Taekwondo. Looking at her lively appearance, I became curious about what kind of family raised such a kid. Want to be my personal secretary? Leona blinked. Personal? How personal? Is it the proper kind of secretary? I was speechless. She shrank her neck. Well. Well, how much is the salary? How much do you want? Leona held up a hand. I asked. Fifty thousand. She was about to wave it off when I said. That's fine. Leona's eyes widened. I looked at her puzzled. What were you about to say? She suddenly hugged me tightly, rubbing her face against my clothes, changing the subject. From now on, you are my benefactor. I promise to be on call 24 hours a day. I felt like a tightly wrapped noodle and said helplessly. All right. All right. I got it. Let go. Let go. We can discuss this calmly. Chapter 10. After this incident, I estimate that the days ahead may not be peaceful. I know what kind of people my parents and brother are. I can guess what kind of tricks they might pull, and with Amelia as a variable. I just hope they don't get too heated. At 11 o'clock at night, I had just finished a video conference, poured a cup of yellow wine, and was preparing to drink it and go to bed. A friend's call came in. He said, what's going on? How come Luis and Amelia are together? Even kissing in public? Didn't you propose to her? Such a fuss over nothing. Didn't Luis get together with her as soon as he came back? But back then, she said she treated Luis like a brother and told us not to gossip. There's that angle too. No wonder this questioning came so late, but it's understandable. Probably Luis hadn't given her a clear signal, and she didn't want to make things difficult for him. Now that Luis's attitude softened, she must be eager. Once I figured it out, it all became clear. Is everyone there? Yes. Are you coming? I'm not coming. Put me on speaker. I have something to say. Not many people knew about my proposal to Amelia, besides our parents. It was just this group of friends. Now it's time to clarify things. Otherwise, it always seems like I've been cheated on. So I said, Amelia and I are over. From now on, she's free to marry whoever she wants, and it's none of my business. After that, I hung up directly. I didn't care if Luis heard it or not. If they wanted to hide it from Luis, that was their business. I never agreed to that. Besides, Luis doesn't really know. I don't believe it. I drank the wine in one gulp, coughed deeply, and was about to go to bed when I heard noisy sounds outside, in the middle of the night, disturbing the peace. I opened the door, ready to lose my temper, but saw Leona's beaming face. Good evening. What are you doing? She pointed to the house opposite mine, moving in. I rubbed my forehead in frustration, moving in. She nodded repeatedly. How can I be your personal secretary if I don't live nearby? What if you need something when I'm not around? I wanted to say, you're overthinking it, but seeing her hopeful eyes, I hesitated, so I beckoned. How much is the rent? I'll reimburse you. Leona, without hesitation, handed over the rental agreement. Her sincere straightforwardness defeated me. Keep it quiet, I'm going to sleep. She mimed zipping her mouth and gave an okay sign. She nodded heavily, with a look of, you can trust me. I sighed and closed the door. I thought I might hear some noise, but it was completely silent so silent that I fell asleep peacefully. Chapter 11. The next day, I brought Leona to the office. Seeing her, the assistant's eyes widened. Seeing her overthinking expression, I immediately explained. From now on, she'll be by my side as my personal secretary. Enter her information. The assistant nodded repeatedly and secretly gave Leona a thumbs up. As we passed through the office area, everyone's attention was drawn. Watching Leona with her striking appearance and tall figure, following closely behind me, the employees whispered, unable to hide their smiles. I didn't need to hear what they were saying to know what they were thinking. And Leona, looking carefree, was laughing loudly behind me. I asked, what are you laughing at? She said, everyone's laughing. Wouldn't it be odd if I didn't laugh? I was speechless. Are you really this naive, putting all your points into strength? But soon, everyone saw that my secretary was definitely not the type they imagined. During the morning meeting, my mom brought Luis, trying to barge in, but Leona blocked them. Seeing Leona, they obediently followed her to my office, allowing me to finish the meeting uninterrupted. When I returned to the office, my mom was hysterical. What are you trying to do? Do you want to drive Luis and me to our deaths? Didn't you promise me you wouldn't tell Luis about you and Amelia? I never promised. 
I looked at Luis, and how do you know he doesn't already know? Luis lifted his head, meeting my gaze, half questioning, half resentful, brother, you knew Amelia loved me, yet you took advantage, don't you feel despicable? I took a step forward, questioning, were you married to her at that time? He replied, no, but, I asked again, were you with her at that time? Although not, but, who was she to you then, your girlfriend or your wife? He was speechless, muttering, she was nothing, I sneered, reprimanding, good, so she was nothing. Yet you dare to question me, what I did with her, how I did it, has nothing to do with you, and what are you, weren't you off pursuing your own love, what now, after getting married, you still want a backup, someone like you, blind and indulgent, dare to act deeply affectionate and question me, I suggest you clear the water from your brain, every time you think, it stinks, people might think you're playing with mud in your head, Luis's face turned red, his body trembling, finally speaking after a long while, it's your fault, Amelia said you forced her, she said that, Luis lifted his chin, yes. I laughed and said, good, let her sue, call the police, don't you dare not go, take her, go immediately, or should I drive you there? Do you have any shame? My mom shouted, raising her hand to hit me, but I grabbed her wrist, immobilizing her. Luis angrily shouted, you dare hit mom, you're truly a bastard with no parents. He pretended to punch me, but seeing Leona's bright, expectant eyes, he froze. I let go of my mom's hand, glanced at the time, and asked, Anything else, will you leave on your own or should I call security? The drama concluded. I thought today would be peaceful for a while, but the assistant hurried in. Manager Lou rejected the cooperation plan submitted a week ago. I asked in a deep voice, reason. The assistant shook his head, no reason. I said, submit it again. It was rejected again. Clearly, Amelia did it on purpose. I called her, what do you want? She said softly, if you want to talk, come yourself. Leona drove me to Amelia's company. She slipped a panic button into my pocket. For the first time, she looked serious and said, press here, and wait 10 seconds. 10 seconds, can you fly? Anyway, it's not like I'm going into a lion's den. I believe that no matter the business dispute, there are always boundaries. In her office, Amelia spoke slowly, uncle wants to return to the company. If you step down as president and hand over the company to him, all cooperation between Fu and Lu will continue as usual. I silently looked at Amelia and asked. Is this also Luis's request? Amelia frowned unhappily. What does this have to do with Luis? Amelia, I began. This company was built step by step by me, and you know it's my grandfather's legacy. Yet you still want to do this. Amelia's lips pressed tightly together. Why are you always so stubborn? You know that if you take a step back, your relationship with the family can improve. Why must it come to this, Joey? I'm doing this for your own good. I promise, if you give up the company, I'll mediate and have uncle and aunt forgive you. You don't have to do this. Once we get married, you'll. I could barely hear what Amelia was saying. Just the word forgive left me stunned. Wait, what? Forgive me? Why do they need to forgive me? Do they have the right to forgive me? Amelia, do you hear yourself? Some things I don't like to think about, but that doesn't mean I've forgotten them. Chapter 12. My name is Joey. I took my grandfather's surname. Grandfather married into the Fu family. He and my grandmother were deeply in love diligently managing the Fu Corporation, not caring what their son's surname was, but my grandmother felt guilty. After my mother gave birth to me, she suggested that I take my grandfather's surname. My parents didn't hesitate to agree. They left me with my grandparents and went abroad. Grandmother regretted it. She thought it was her idea that blocked my relationship with my parents, but it wasn't. My parents didn't love me. They didn't even want to have me. They were traveling the world when I was conceived. They planned to have an abortion, but it was too late and would harm my mother's health. Repeated morning sickness wore her down to skin and bones. The late-stage stretch marks nearly drove her to collapse. She had a difficult labor, transitioning from natural to cesarean, suffering twice in one birth. She said I was here to collect a debt. I can't love him. Seeing him annoys me, and I can't help it. When I was three, they finished their travels and returned home. Grandmother encouraged me to get close to her, but she pushed me away. Don't touch my dress. Why are you so dirty? You're so disobedient. What kind of teaching did my in-laws give you? You look like an ungrateful wolf, impossible to raise well. Better to have another one. And so, Luis was born with their full expectations. He was their precious one, so much so that I wasn't allowed near him. If I did, I would get slapped. What are you holding? Who let you up here? Were you going to poke Luis's eyes? Why are you so malicious? I wasn't. I just wanted to touch his face, but facing my hysterical mother, I was too scared to even defend myself. Father forced me to apologize to my mother and brother. It was my grandparents who protected me. Grandmother shook with anger. Impossible. I raised this child. I know his nature. 
Father tried to smooth things over. So what if it wasn't his fault? That's his mother. What's wrong with apologizing? You've spoiled him too much. How is he spoiled? In what way is he spoiled? I raised him well. Why do you talk like he's bad? Father wanted to say more. But grandfather stepped in. Joe did nothing wrong and will apologize to no one. If you keep this up, you can leave this house with your kids. Grandmother told me, it's okay. Even if my parents didn't love me, she and grandfather always would. Grandfather told me, to truly let go, you must first hold on. If you don't hold on, how can you let go? Don't fear the pain. Quick and sharp pain is easier than slow. Grinding pain. I once was cherished, but after grandmother passed away, they tricked me into going abroad. They confined grandfather, forcing him to change his will. I am your biological son. I'm not dead yet. Why leave the company to Joey? You're so biased. Even if it goes to Joey, shouldn't Luis get a share too? In that darkest moment, I cried out to heaven and earth with no response. I struggled and pleaded, just to return to grandfather's side one day. On that drizzly day, rainwater soaked my shoes and dripped on me from the eaves. I was cold, wet, and starving. My head pounded, and I felt dizzy, thinking I might not survive. But then I saw Amelia, rain misting her eyelashes, forming sparkling drops. Her gaze was clear, with an indescribable sorrow. She slowly approached, holding a small purple umbrella over my head. At that moment, the sound of the rain seemed distant leaving only the two of us in the world. I came to find you, Joey. It was Amelia who found me and brought me back. She took me to grandfather's sickbed. Grandfather held my hand and asked, Do you want the company? I said, Grandfather, you will be fine. You will get better. He patted my head and continued, Whether you want it or not, I can only give it to you. Joe, this company is your grandmother and my life's work. Will you guard it for us? After grandmother passed, grandfather didn't last long. Two funerals nearly killed me but they still wouldn't let me go. My mother forced me to sign a share transfer contract, threatening to send me to a mental hospital for electroshock therapy if I refused. I resisted, so they tortured me, locking me in the basement, giving me one meal and one glass of water every three days. Again, it was Amelia who secretly brought me food through the basement window every few days, when my parents tried to have me committed, claiming I was mentally ill. She begged her parents to help me. During that time, she stayed with me, she repeatedly told me. You're not sick. Don't let others think you are. This same Amelia is now saying they need to forgive me. Chapter 13. At this moment, I smiled at her, feeling a rush of exhilaration. I felt as if the skies had cleared and my mind had never been this clear. Amelia stared blankly and asked, What's wrong with you? She suddenly grabbed my hand and said, I didn't mean that. I just think, after all, you are family, and you. I didn't want to hear her speak. I didn't want to hear anything she had to say. Get out. You want me to leave? Yes get out. I pried her fingers off me. Amelia's face turned cold, and with a command, the security guards outside rushed in. Hold him down. That was Amelia's order. At that moment, I realized they had no boundaries. I fought back, left and right, like a madman. Those past traumas. The drugs injected into my body. The countless electroshocks. The locked iron doors. The restraints binding my hands and feet. They all surged into my mind. I grabbed a medium-sized potted plant by the coffee table swung it in a wide arc, creating a safe distance. I then stepped onto the sofa, crossing over. I intended to rush past the desk and take Amelia as a hostage, but she moved to the other end. Just then, they closed in again, forcing me onto the table. I swung back at the ones trying to climb up, hitting one who, in pain, retreated, taking advantage. I flipped over to the other side, pressing myself tightly against the wall to avoid being surrounded. For a moment, I had a chance to catch my breath. I kept swinging the potted plant to fend off anyone approaching. With my left hand, I reached into my pocket to find the panic button. Amelia shouted, There's only one of him and seven or eight of you, and you can't hold him down, do you want to be fired? They swarmed me, tearing away the plant, and pushed me against the wall. I finally found and pressed the panic button buried deep in my pocket. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Leona said it would only take ten seconds. Six, five. I was pinned to the ground by the guards. Amelia looked down at me, her high heel hovering over my hand. She coldly asked, What did you say? I kept counting. Four, three, two, bang. A loud crash. The office door was forcefully kicked open. I turned my head. Leona's stunning figure stood heroically. Her fist extended in front of her. The door had a large hole in the middle where it had been smashed. Everyone's attention shifted to her, and Amelia took several steps back in shock. Leona, with a mischievous glint in her eyes, said. It's lively here. Before anyone could react, she rushed to my side, tossing the guards away and kicking Amelia aside. Joey, are you okay? I gritted my teeth and trembled, saying, let's go. 
I knew I had lost my composure. Leona practically dragged me out. Behind us, Amelia shouted, Joey, how dare you leave? Chapter 14 Leona took me to her home without asking. It was simply decorated, with no ornaments, giving it a stark, lifeless feel. Leona walked around a few times before finally bringing out a can of beer. She scratched her head awkwardly and said, I wanted to find you something else, but this is all I have. Maybe you should go back. Before she could finish, I took the beer from her hand. This will do. I didn't want to go home. Even though my home was right across the street, at this moment, I didn't want to be alone. Leona, usually so talkative, was uncharacteristically silent. She sat with me, drinking can after can of beer, until I was slightly tipsy. I started to speak. I talked about my grandfather's last words to me, about the decline of the Fu Corporation. The company my parents had coveted for so long was already a fading flower. When I took over, my father had ruined it beyond recognition. I was holding it together by sheer force of will. It was exhausting. I didn't dare relax. I was afraid of disappointing my grandparents. I was afraid they'd be angry, blame me. But actually, have you ever thought about it? Leona suddenly said. Your grandfather wasn't trying to save the company. He was trying to protect you. Hmm? I didn't quite understand. Leona said. You had just started college and your parents were awful to you without that company as a shield. How would you have grown up? Would you have been bullied? Would they have hurt you? It's true that with the crown comes the burden, but because of the crown, people didn't dare mess with you. Your grandfather probably didn't care about the company. He just wanted to make sure you grew up safely. I was stunned. The image of my grandfather, distressed and reluctant on his deathbed, came to mind. It was as if he was saying to me, Joe, Grandpa can't protect you anymore. What will you do? My voice trembled. I murmured. No one's ever told me that. I'd never thought of it that way. Everyone saw me as a beneficiary, and I saw myself as carrying a heavy burden. That feeling of being physically and mentally exhausted had always pressed down on me, not letting me breathe. But now, someone told me they were still protecting me. Even though they were gone, they were still protecting me in their own way. I sat quietly on the living room carpet all night. Leona didn't comfort me or offer advice. She just sat across from me, never leaving, until the sky began to lighten. And I asked her softly. How did you get there in 10 seconds? She said, I was following you the whole time. I told you I'm a personal secretary. How could I let you go up there alone? Chapter 15 Amelia kept her word. She began to attack the Fu Corporation's business on all fronts, not caring if it meant harming herself in the process. The board of directors kept pressuring me repeatedly. My parents, on the other hand, suddenly went quiet. They were waiting to reap the benefits. Luis came to see me, pretending to be kind, brother. Don't blame Amelia. She's doing it for me. Father is old. And our parents have been suppressed for too long. I just want them to have a secure old age. I was too busy at the time. I didn't even want to give him a glance. I just told Leona. Throw him out. Luis stormed off in a huff. Joey. One day you'll beg me. Beg him. Is that possible? In my busy schedule. I took a moment to think about it. Probably not. Amelia gradually undermined my authority. I didn't resist. Everyone thought I was a goner. Unable to bounce back but they didn't know I had been busy making money. All the deals Amelia blocked were snatched up by a company called Domboy Investment. The reason I hadn't left yet was to wait for those key staff members who had resigned and wanted to leave with me. I sighed and told Leona, I really envy those rich second-generation heirs who just need to live off their family wealth. As a third-generation heir, I feel so helpless. Leona's face was odd. Why? I pouted. Haven't you heard? Wealth doesn't last three generations. What are you going to do? I shrugged. Since I can't live off the family wealth, I'll have to become a lonely and cold tycoon myself. Leona rolled her eyes. Poor you. I suddenly stepped forward. She shrank back. What are you doing? I pulled her collar aside and saw the dark red hickey. I couldn't help but ask. How many days has it been? Why hasn't it faded? Leona turned green. She slapped my hand away. Looking fierce. Do you have any shame? Broad daylight. What are you trying to do? I said innocently. I'm just concerned about you. What else could I do? Leona's earlobes turned crimson. Don't pretend to be kind. How am I pretending? If you were really kind, why didn't you stop when I said no? I stammered. Isn't it true that when a girl says no, she means yes? Leona glared. My no means no. Got it. I'll be careful next time. Getting into bed with Leona seemed natural. After she fed me for a week straight, one night she cooked a big meal. We drank. She kissed me. And I held her. Chapter 16 The day I was removed from my position was bright and sunny. My father was full of joy, waiting for me to step down. President Wong, please. I nodded and stood up, calling out. Those who had been waiting to leave stood up and followed me. The scene was grand and impressive. This was the moment I had been waiting for. I had to admit, it felt great. My father's face changed. What, what's going on? 
The obsequious manager stepped forward, they're useless anyway. I approved their resignations. My father looked at me suspiciously. I grinned at him and said, you've just cut your own artery. They wouldn't realize it immediately, but the fall of the building was only a matter of time. The day I left the company, Amelia was waiting for me downstairs. She said, come with me, I'll help you start over. I looked at her in confusion. Why do you think I would go with you? Amelia frowned, don't be like this, even though you have nothing now. I, before she could finish, Leona appeared. She leaned on me, pressing her face against my chest, glaring at Amelia. I told you, in a law-abiding society, don't mess with my men. After her fierce words, she pouted, looking aggrieved. You said you'd take responsibility for me. That look made me seem like a heartless man. I chuckled and rubbed her head. I will. Didn't say I wouldn't. Amelia's eyes turned red, staring at me and Leona. You're with her. You lied to me, didn't you? I don't believe it. Amelia, don't bother me anymore. But she didn't give up, stepping forward to grab me. Leona turned and raised her fist. I said, don't. She glared at me. Are you protecting her? I sighed. I'm protecting you. Do you want to go to jail? If you go to jail, who will cook for me? I pulled Leona to leave. Amelia shouted, Joey. I turned to look at her. Her gaze was a mix of resentment and pleading. If you dare leave with her, we're really over. Over. I laughed. Amelia, when you helped them against me, we lost the last bit of our connection. I didn't. I didn't want to hear more from her. Neither did Leona. She childishly covered my ears and hung onto me. I sighed and picked her up. Chapter 17. The yellow jacket is mine. And I've never tried to hide it. It was no surprise that Amelia found out. When she stormed into my office, her face was red, full of disappointment and resentment. You've been lying to me. I asked Amelia, what did I lie to you about? She gritted her teeth and spat out two words, yellow jacket. Amelia, you should have done your research before confronting me. I founded yellow jacket three years ago. I told you about my hopes, my plans, and my dreams, but you didn't listen. Amelia looked bewildered, clearly having forgotten, but the Fu Corporation was entrusted to you by your grandfather, and you just abandoned it. I laughed. Get it straight. Did I abandon it? Or did you all force me out? I didn't really want to force you out. I just. You just wanted to make me bow down, didn't you? My words made Amelia clench her hands at her sides. You know I'm not someone who bows easily. So you used what I care about most to manipulate me. I can understand all that. But what I don't get is why you did it. No. Amelia shook her head in panic. I was just angry at you. I wanted you to bow down. To coax me. And come back to me. We were ready to get married but you suddenly said it was over. Joey, why are you treating me like this? Betraying me like this? Her words were so absurd, they left me speechless. Before I could respond, Luis stormed in. He rushed at me, but Amelia stepped in front of him. What are you doing? His eyes blazed with anger as he questioned me. Did you force Amelia to come here? How can a brother like you fight with your own brother over a woman? Do you think she brought you back from abroad because? Stop talking. Amelia looked at him in horror, trying to cover his mouth. If you say one more word, we're done. Luis, filled with rage, said, Amelia, what's wrong with you? You're willing to break up with me for him. This farce made me laugh. My laughter infuriated Luis. He shouted, do you think you've won? Are you feeling proud? I nodded seriously. Seeing you upset makes me happy. Luis's face turned red with anger. Ha, huh, you're proud. Do you really think she likes you? Don't you know that what you thought was your salvation was actually all for me? Stop talking. Shut up. Slap. Amelia slapped Luis hard. She was trembling, looking at me in panic. No, Joey. Luis seemed to expect me to break down. Amelia looked at me with caution. But in truth, I felt no turmoil inside. I said, I know. Someone had asked Amelia why she brought me back from abroad and why she protected me. Did she fall for Joey? She said no. How could I care about his life or death? If he just died like that, it would lead to an investigation involving Luis's parents, causing a lot of trouble for Luis. I had recorded those words and kept them on my phone, listening to them over and over. Now, I played it for Amelia. Her face turned white as a sheet. Why, if you knew, why did you stay with me? I leaned back in my chair, thinking about how to phrase it. Maybe I was too young then. Losing two close family members and being betrayed by the rest, I felt like I couldn't go on. But to live, I needed something to hold on to. No matter why you were good to me, you were still good to me. So I fell for you. But Amelia, loving you is a doomed losing deal. What should I do about it? My grandfather always told me to pick things up and put them down. What does that mean? It means you have to pick them up before you can put them down. So I thought, how can I let you go? The first step is to have you. Amelia took two uncontrolled steps back. Are you telling me that every day we were together, it was all just to leave me? I looked at her silently. She shook her head. I don't believe it. You love me. You do love me. Love you. My foot. 
The office door banged open. Leona's bag flew in ahead of her, hitting Amelia. Amelia groaned, taking two steps back. I quickly moved forward, catching Leona as she leaped into my arms. She was shouting, her arms flailing. I've been out for three hours and you come to mess things up. So annoying. Amelia clutched her aching stomach, her face growing paler. You're getting back at me, aren't you? You're not really together. You're just getting back at me, aren't you? Fine. I lose. Joey, I give up. Just come back. I'll agree to anything. You really asking for it? Leona raged, struggling like a wild boar. I turned back in irritation amid the chaos. You're overthinking it. No revenge. I just don't like you anymore. I didn't see Amelia's reaction, but Leona laughed. Don't like her anymore. Did you hear that? He's mine. Her tone was as triumphant as could be. Amelia was eventually escorted out by security, along with the terrified, slumped Luis. None of that was my concern. My main task was to calm someone down. She was about to explode. Chapter 18. Leona crossed her arms, pacing back and forth in anger. How did she get up here? Is the downstairs security system just for show? And those security guards, are they useless? No way. You need to fire them all and replace them. I refuse to believe she can't be stopped. Her pacing made my eyes hurt. Can you sit down for a moment? She glared at me. I'm annoyed. I sighed. Let me hold you for a bit. I'm tired. She paused. After a second of hesitation, she obediently walked over to me. I wrapped my arms around her waist, pulling her into my lap. Finally, some peace. I asked her, where did you go? She said, I had some business back at the company. Leona held multiple roles. Besides being my personal secretary, she also had a position at a design studio. I found out later that this seemingly tough delivery girl had studied design. On a whim, I asked, do you want me to invest in you and set up a studio for you? Um, actually, I need to tell you something. Hearing the reluctance in her voice, I looked up suspiciously. What is it? Did you cheat on me? Impossible. She almost jumped up. Then what is it? She picked up the finance magazine on my desk and pointed to an interview on the cover. You know this person, right? Yeah, he's my dad. And that design studio, it's mine. I'm the rich second generation heir you talk about who should be living off their family's wealth but insists on starting a business. Life is indeed full of surprises. Leona explained that her father always saw her as a problem child. He wanted her to go to business school. She chose to study design. He wanted her to study abroad. She chose to stay home and learn martial arts. He wanted her to return and take over the family business. She chose to start her own company. I'm not trying to defy my dad. I have my own ideas. I was practically born in Rome. And for me, studying or starting a business is just training. But for many others, it's a matter of survival. I had a classmate who was excellent and had great ambitions. After graduation, she got married and had kids. When I saw her again, she was working as a cashier at a convenience store. Those hands could draw the most beautiful clothes. But now they're doing repetitive, meaningless work. I've met too many girls like that because of their gender, their age, or past choices. They don't get opportunities. I just want to give them another chance. I looked at her silently. Then why did you work as a delivery girl? Leona's mouth turned downwards. I ran out of money. I couldn't pay salaries. So you took on side jobs to support your company? Yes. Sigh. Looking at the helpless kitten before me, I patted her head. How is your company doing now? She looked even more broken. Not good. Gather your company's financial statements and operational reports for me. What are you going to do? I'll evaluate them. If it's worth investing in, I'll invest in it under the name of Yellow Jacket. And if it's not worth it, then I'll invest in it under my name. Leona hugged me tightly. What if it fails? I kissed her. If it fails, it fails. I can afford it. But I will have to work even harder. Chapter 19 Yellow Jacket continued to grow as planned. Meanwhile, news about Foo Corporation kept reaching my ears. They say a new broom sweeps clean. The first thing my father did was set up a studio for his beloved son reportedly poaching several top-notch agents at a high price. He invested heavily in promotion and hype, waiting for a big hit. He also used his connections to land a major government project. Just as he was enjoying his success, my mother hosted an extravagant banquet, as if to show off their newfound status. Of course, I wasn't invited. Amelia wasn't present either. I heard she and Luis had fallen out after the incident. One day, she called me drunk, Leona, tapping on her phone, asked me, can I block her? I thought, you're already doing it, and still asking me. But I nodded. Yes. Amelia must have tried to find me. I heard rumors, but I never saw her. I have to admit, when it comes to tight security, Leona is a pro. For her good performance, she asked for a reward, she wanted me to meet her parents. I was quite nervous, but her mother was kind. Her father, however, seemed hesitant. We exchanged contact information, 
On the way back, her father messaged me, are you interested in joining my company? Leona was exasperated. He's given up on me and wants to poach you, to manage the company. Leona mused aloud in the car. He keeps pushing me to take over the family business. When will it end? I thought for a moment and said, how about we have a child and transfer this huge responsibility to him? Wouldn't that solve the problem once and for all? Leona froze for a couple of seconds and then slammed on the brakes. She looked at me, blushing furiously. What did you say? I said once and for all. I took out the ring I had prepared, opened it in front of her, and, oddly enough, I felt a bit nervous. This isn't the right place or time, but the atmosphere is already set. I don't want to miss this moment. So, Miss Leona, will you marry Mr. Joey? Leona's eyes filled with tears. She threw herself into my arms, nodding repeatedly. Yes, I will. Chapter 20 The Fu family fell apart. Their carefully constructed illusion shattered in an instant. Though my father lacked business acumen, he wasn't stupid. I never imagined he would resort to bribery. It was obvious someone wanted to take advantage of him before everything fell apart. A simple trap. And he walked right into it. 20 million. Enough to keep him in prison for a long time. My mother found me, demanding that I pay to get him out. I looked at her, amused. He broke the law. How do you expect me to get him out? She scoffed. Isn't it just about money? You don't want to spend a penny to help your father. Your grandfather made you promise to look after us. I nodded. Grandpa did make me promise, but he said to make sure you don't starve. That's it. Besides, I advise you not to make any rash moves in such a sensitive time. But she wasn't one to listen. Three days after I spoke to her, she was taken to the police station, charged with causing a disturbance and trespassing. It was obvious she had tried to bribe someone and they called the police. The police contacted me to bail her out. Was it because the other party didn't want to cause a scene? No, the official didn't want the trouble, but my mother still thought she was right. I was so angry I laughed. Go ahead, do what you want, then you can all be together inside. She fell silent, grabbing my sleeve. You won't just abandon your father, will you? I pushed her hand away. I can't help him. What about the company? It was left to you by your grandfather. You'll take care of it, right? I looked at her suspiciously. What did you do? She avoided my gaze. I didn't do anything. I just heard the project was very profitable. They said it was a sure thing. It's our family's company. It won't be a problem if you just put the money back in. I stepped back, looking at her coldly. That's your problem, not mine. But it was your grandfather's company. It's yours now. I told her. You have another son. She fell silent at that. I went to Luis out of spite. I didn't expect to give her a new idea. That night, Amelia called me again with a different number. I was about to hang up and block her when she spoke urgently. Luis came to me. My hesitation seemed to give her hope. She spoke quickly. They came to me, asking for money to pay off the debt. I refused. Joe. I turned him down. I didn't help him. After a long silence, I spoke. You should have helped him. If you did, I would at least think you sincerely loved someone. But now, you love no one. I love you, Joey. I love you. I really do. Come back, please. I was wrong. I'll never talk to him again. Never see him again. Just come back. Okay. Amelia. I'm here. Don't contact me again. Joe. Don't call me that. It's disgusting. Joe was the name my grandparents gave me. Meaning, broad-minded. Able to carve out a place even in a harsh world. Grandpa said. That's how our family should be. The name represented the expectations of those who loved me. So, I only wanted to be called that by those I loved and who loved me. Like Leona. Can I call you that? Leona asked shyly. Holding onto my back. I moved heavily, almost breaking her, and asked, do you love me? She shuddered, whispering, I love you, Joe, I love you. Epilogue. Leona and Joey got married in the second year of their relationship. A lot happened that year. For example, his father was sentenced to prison. The Fu Corporation went bankrupt. His mother was in a car accident. Luis pushed her. After Amelia left the country, heartbroken, Luis finally realized she would never be with him again. He got scared. He wanted to escape. He planned to sell all his assets and flee the country, but his mother disagreed. She still hoped to be a wealthy socialite. She thought as long as they could fill the company's financial hole, it would still make money, but she didn't know the company's capital chain had long been broken, and the money she embezzled couldn't fix it. So, the loving mother and son argued over money. Luis pushed his mother. No one knew if it was intentional. Anyway, his mother was hit by a car. The car fled the scene. Luis ran, missing the best time for treatment. His mother was paralyzed. Joey secretly sent her to a nursing home. As for Luis, he was caught at the airport. Joey and Leona personally led the team. Luis screamed. What do you want? Joey smiled wickedly. Nothing. Just taking you to a place with food, drink, and a place to stay. Luis was terrified. You want me to go to jail? 
I didn't mean to push her. Leona shook her head in disapproval. Jail. How could we? That would be too much for the young master of the Fu family. After all, they had arranged a better place for him, right next to his mother. From then on, he could talk to his paralyzed mother, chat, and keep her company. Why not? Of course, Luis didn't give in easily, so Joey told him, if you dare to leave the nursing home, I'll send your location to your ex-wife. I heard she's been looking for you. You choose, your ex-wife or your mother. Luis was scared to death. His ex-wife was a lunatic, always with a knife, either cutting herself or others. If she found him, he would be tortured, because it was actually him who had cheated during their marriage. So he had no choice but to comply, Luis thought. Anyway, his mother was taken care of. He wouldn't have to do anything. No big deal. But soon Luis found out he was wrong. That woman had gone mad. She was also mentally ill. She constantly tried to hit Luis, saying he caused her paralysis, but he wasn't the one who hit her with a car, why blame him? She also said, if I hadn't given birth to you, it would have been better if only Joey were my only son. Luis laughed, do you think Joey would acknowledge you? Dream on, he holds grudges when you pushed him down the stairs, breaking his leg, burned him with a cigarette, and made him kneel, he remembered it all. It was because of you, his mother shouted, you said Joey bullied you, you lied to me. Luis laughed even harder. I was just a kid. Could I have tricked you? You just didn't like him. Do you know? Seeing you treat Joey like that scared me to death. I thought, if you didn't like me anymore, would you treat me the same way? So I did everything to frame Joey, afraid he'd compete with me. They argued like mad, exposing each other's faults without mercy. Watching the monitor, Leona's heart broke. She smashed one table after another to barely suppress her rage. That night, back home, she hugged her husband, feeling her heart ache. Joey let her vent. When he finished his work, he turned to her, what's wrong? Leona shook her head, mumbling, nothing. Joey sighed, if it hurts to listen, don't. Why put yourself through it? Leona stiffened, you knew. Joey chuckled, pinching her nose, when you didn't come back for a long time, I knew, sorry, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. Joey frowned, pulling her into his arms, I'm not mad, no need to apologize, I can guess what they said, I just don't want you to be upset. Leona was indeed upset, very upset. If I had met you sooner, it would have been better. Joey's heart softened. It's not too late. Whenever you show up, it's never too late. Leona hugged him tightly. Don't be sad. Joey couldn't help but laugh. Actually, it's okay. The harm she caused me was just a few instances. When I was younger and still craved parental love, I would approach them. After getting hurt a few times and letting go, I avoided them. And I had my grandparents, who avenged me. Joey always felt he wasn't particularly unlucky. Though his parents didn't love him, he had his grandparents. Now he had Leona, he had suffered and endured, but he had also been loved, and he was still loved now, what more could he want? Life is never perfect, but having a part of it is enough.